Okay, we're going to get started. City Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Would you like the roll for both? The, uh, the City Council, it? Successor Agency, Finance, and Authority. Okay. Roll call is uh, Council Member, Authority Member Johnson. Present. Mann. Present. Smith. Here. Christ. Present. Mayor Paris. We have a quorum. I uh, move to uh, um, excuse Mayor Paris. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, the Housing Authority, let's call that to order. Roll call for the Housing Authority. Authority Member Harvey. Mann. Present. Smith. Here. Vice Chair Chris. Present. Chair Zetto, we have a quorum. Move to excuse Harvey and Zetto. Second that. Let's vote. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, the invocation is Ryan Paris, the New Hope Community Church. Ryan, are you here? We have a backup, Chris Johnson. <laughs> Please rise. It's a privilege to uh, pray tonight. Thank you for maintaining uh, this as a priority of your meetings. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for this evening, for this city. For this city council that stands before me, God, there's no doubt in my mind that you have selected each one of them to serve in this capacity. And God, I thank you tonight as well for the city staff and just pray that you'd bless each one. God, we ask that this city would be a blessing to you. And we are grateful for the privilege of living in the city of Lancaster. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Desert Christian Middle School leadership is going to do the pledge for us. Come on down. We have a special presentation this evening. Could we have Mr. Bozigan up here with us, please? He says you're on your own. Okay. So often at times we don't understand the type of leader that we have amongst us uh, in the Lancaster community. And what I'd like to do is I want to begin by reading this proclamation, but I, I want to digress a little bit uh, before I begin to do so, is I want to let you know that it's deja vu for Mark, because his very first job that he ever had, he actually worked for me 
at the McDonald's restaurant on Avenue I. So when we take a look at his skill set and some of his basic business fundamentals, I'm proud to say that he learned some of those things from me. So what I would like to do tonight is I would like to begin by reading this proclamation and then we have something very special to give to Mark. So let me begin. <clears throat> Whereas Mark V. Bozegan began his professional career in 1972 at the McDonald's in Lancaster on Avenue I as a trainee signified by the white trainee hat and would work in that position for two years never completing the training program to achieve the position of a certified crew member. And whereas Mark would then reluctantly go on to Loyola Marymount University and earn both a bachelor's and a master's degree in business administration. And whereas he would work diligently for years in the private sector as where he would become a realtor, a business co-owner, and a business manager uh, for Hughes Aircraft. And whereas he then went on to a dedicated public service position serving three years with the MTA uh, in capital planning and program department, eventually directing long range financial planning section for what is today an agency that has an annual budget of $2.8 billion. Whereas in 1995, he joined the staff of the city of Lancaster as a fledgling public servant. And he served tirelessly, committing countless hours, giving great personal sacrifice, and always exhibiting tremendous enthusiasm for his work in the positions of transportation programs coordinator, assistant to the city manager, redevelopment director, assistant city manager, before finally reaching the highest position in the Lancaster City Government as our city manager. And now, therefore, the, the Lancaster City Council do commend and honor Mark V. Bosigian for over 40 years of dedicated service in both the public and private sector, and do, high, do hereby bespo, dis, excuse me, bestow upon him the coveted official McDonald's blue hat. <laughs> which signifies that he is now a certified crew member. Thank you. Let's get a picture. Go ahead over here. Come on, kid. Kid, get the prize. This is great. I'm proud. Ken, 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 tell them, tell them how old that hat is that he has on his yes, head. Yes, I want to make sure that everybody understands that hat is over 43 years old. You don't know what it took for me. <laughs> what Ken didn't tell you is the training program you were supposed to make it through in about three months. And it took me two years, and it was an embarrassment to myself and my family. I also apparently had some unresolved issues because I had the opportunity, my wife and I, to go out to dinner with Ken and his lovely wife, Rosemary, and I proceeded to say things to Ken that he should have fired me for. <laughs> I mean, a year ago, a month ago. So there were some unresolved issues, but this makes it all worthwhile. Thank you. <laughs> That has to be a McDonald's record for that, uh, that has training. Yes. Two year <laughs> training program and not passing. Yeah. Uh, record. Like they say, never, never, never give up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a uh, urgency item that needs to be added to the agenda. It's a joint item between the city and the Lancaster Success Agency regarding a transfer of funds. Uh, we need a motion for that. Can, can we hear yeah, the other reasoning for it? For we need. Um, a two-thirds vote to add it to the agenda. 
uh, pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.2b2, which allows an item to be added to the agenda by a two-thirds vote if there is an immediate need for action and the need came to the attention of the city um, and successor agency after the agenda was posted. This item came to our attention on March the 8th, um, this last Sunday, I believe it was, Saturday, excuse me, uh, and there's a five-day window within which the city and successor agency are required to act. Uh, so the uh, immediate need is the five-day window provided by Department of Finance, and it came to our attention after the agenda was posted on Friday. So we need a motion and a two-thirds vote to add it. So moved. Second. Let's vote. Motion passes 4-0. Okay, I'm going to move um, the CA1 to now so we can get these people back to their jobs. Um, <clears throat> so let's take CA1. No speaker cards? So on behalf of the mayor, um, I'd like to nominate Michelle Bowers for the Architect and Design Planning Commission to the Lancaster Criminal Justice Commission. I'm going to do, or the mayor would like to uh, nominate Christy Velasquez and close. <laughs> and the Neighborhood Vitalization Commission, Stan Mohammed. So could we get a motion? So moved. I second. We have a motion and a second. Let's vote. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do this separately. So I'm going to ask our councilwoman to swear in Michelle Bowers. Michelle? Michelle Bowers. Do solemnly, Do solemnly swear that I will support, that I will support and, defend the and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith, bear true faith and allegiance, and allegiance, and allegiance the of the to the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservations. Without any mental reservations. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will. And that I will. Well and faithfully. Well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Stan Mohammed, you'll be sworn in by Councilman Ron Smith. Stan Mohammed, glad to meet you. I, Stan Mohammed. I, Stan Mohammed. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, without any mental reservation, reservation or, purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. 
discharge the duties of which I'm about to enter. Thank you, sir. And Christy. Can you say your last name for everyone so I don't butcher it again? <laughs> Valles Gunzies. Okay. <laughs> Raise your right hand, please. I, Christy. I, Christy Valles Gunzies. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. I will bear true faith and allegiance. I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties which I'm upon to enter. Congratulations. Thank you very much. City Manager, any items to be removed? Uh, no, sir. Let's do the uh, urgency item JNB1. Barbara? Good evening, Vice Mayor Christ, Council Members. The item before you at this time is to request approval for the transfer of funds to the successor agency and to make payment to the LA County Auditor Controller. AB 1484 added requirements for successor agencies to hire auditors to prepare reports called to due diligence reviews. Two separate reports were due, one for housing and one for all other funds of the former redevelopment agency. The purpose of the reports were, was to determine whether the agency was holding any funds that should be remitted to the county auditor controller for distribution to other taxing entities, of which the city is one of those. The review of the non-housing funds was completed and sent to the Department of Finance. The report that was submitted to Department of Finance determined that the successor agency did not have funds available for distribution. The Department of Finance then completed their review of the report and disallowed transfers made between January and June 2011 from the redevelopment agency to the city in the amount of $118,244. They notified us of the um, results of their review. We received a letter from them over the weekend. The purpose of the transfer made in 2011 was in repayment of loans made, prior loans made from the city to the redevelopment agency. Per government code or health and safety code, the agency has five working days to remit the amount due or incur possible penalties, including the withholding of sales and property tax. The completion of the due diligence reviews and the remittance of the funds due are steps in the process to the successor agency receiving what's called a finding of completion. The finding of completion is something that I like to think of as the golden ticket. Once we have that, the loans that the city made to the agency former redevelopment agency over 
the life of the agency, which total over $25 million, then become, once again, enforceable obligations of the successor agency and can be eligible for repayment when funds become available. Uh, there is one last step um, after this in receiving our finding of completion, which is resolving the issue of the unpaid true-up uh, demand that they made of us in July in the amount of $5.8 million. We're in the process of trying to schedule a meet and confer with the Department of Finance. We expect to uh, go to Sacramento and meet with them this week. It's down to a question of $74,000, and we want to get with them and resolve that. It is our recommendation tonight that the council approve a transfer of $118,244 from the city's general fund fund balance to the successor agency and that the successor agency approve payment to the county auditor controller. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Do we have any questions? Do we have a motion? Move that we approve the transfer of the $118,244 from the fund to the successor agency. Can we do this for both the city council and the successor agencies at the same time? Yes. Does that include that? Yes. For the successor agency also. I'll second both those motions. Let's vote. Motion passes 4-0. Housing Authority. <clears throat> We have no speaker cards. We have a motion and a second for adoption of the Housing Authority. So moved. I'll second that. Let's vote. Motion passes 3-0. We're going to receive an update from the Housing Asset Transfer. Good evening, Vice Mayor Chris, or excuse me, Vice Chair Chris and Authority members. Tonight I'd like to give you an update on where we stand with the housing asset transfer form. As um, Barbara mentioned, AB 1484 had several requirements imposed um, along with the passing of that, uh, that bill. And one of those was to require an extensive report of all of the assets transferred from the former redevelopment Lancaster or uh, low moderate income housing fund to the Lancaster Housing Authority. And that had to be filed with the Department of Finance. In late August, we received a letter from Department of Finance stating that they objected to essentially all of the real property transfers, which included the homes and vacant lands that were acquired over the years by the housing division of the former redevelopment agency. Over the last six months, Housing and Neighborhood Revitalization staff, which is Liz and her fine staff, as well as finance staff, worked together tirelessly to um, prove to the Department of Finance that these transfers were permitted under the law. And um, many hours were spent gathering data and collecting documents and sending them off to Department of Finance um, in order to justify the transfers. Well, tonight I'm very happy to inform you that last week we received a letter from the Department of Finance. Their final determination is that 289 of the 293 real properties um, are properly transferred. So they are now under the, the uh, jurisdiction of the Lancaster Housing Authority. Of the four disallowed properties, there are parking lots that will go under the um, disposition handled by the Lancaster Successor Agency. This is a huge victory for the citizens of this community and another, in the another major obstacle in the uh, wind down of redevelopment and one of the things that Barbara mentioned in order to get the golden ticket. So I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions? None for me. Thank you. Thank you. No speaker cards for the um, council minutes. We have a motion and a second for M1. So moved. I'll second that. Let's vote. It'll work. Is that housing? No. 
Councilman. Sorry. Motion passes 4 0. Are there any items to be pulled from the uh, consent calendar? No speaker cards. Move to adopt the consent calendar as currently comprised. I second. We have a motion to second. Let's vote. Motion passes. Four yeses. We don't have any speaker cards, but let's hear a, for NB1, Shannon Dow. Good evening, Vice Mayor Christ and members of the City Council. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the Spice Up Lancaster Loan Program, which you approved in November 2012 in an effort to fill existing vacancies in the City of Lancaster, as well as to assist existing small businesses and build the City's sales tax revenue base. The loan you have before you tonight is for Domingo's Mexican and Seafood Restaurant, which has been a fixture of the region since it first began in 1988. We have here Domingo Gutierrez to tell you a little bit about the restaurant. I'm not such a good guest speaker, but I'm just going to do my best, okay? Uh, my name is Wayne Gutierrez. Uh, I grew up in the Yellow Valley, came here in the 70s. And uh, I was at a dream when they had my own restaurant. And uh, God uh, provided that for me in 88 and uh, came to Lancaster. And uh, I mean, I came to uh, <laughs> Boron and opened a restaurant there in 88. And uh, things went farther, and then we went on and opened one in the Ashby and one in Spuria. But uh, it's. We want to make things short, and we, we decided we want to come back to Lancaster and uh, bring the best to our people. And God told me this is my last stop, and uh, this is when I'm going to come to bring the best to you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Any discussion? Yes, actually, um, I had the privilege of going to Alamo Valley High School with Domingo. So, Domingo, we have a connection there. Go Lopes. Right? Go Lopes. Yeah. Uh, came in, I looked on Mrs. Johnson and said, oh, yeah, we Elopes and uh, rocks. And all. That's right. That's right. There you go. <laughs> We're up little kids here. And, uh, there you we, go. We've seen what like actually used to be small in the back in the 70s and early 80s. And uh, that was uh, a different different uh, history that we see right now. I mean, uh, back then, uh, anywhere you go, you run to people you knew each other. Kind of, hey, I know you from somewhere, you know. I remember uh, one time uh, I was working at Casa Miguel and, uh, as a busboy. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got to high school, I was going to go to college, and uh, for some reason, uh, I didn't have the input to go to college, so I said, oh, I'm going to give me another job. So I went to work at uh, Albertsons on Avenue I, and uh, the guy said, oh, I'll sign you up a couple of days a week out there. So he started with a couple of days, and, and all of a sudden, I was working four, five, seven days out there, six, seven days out there. Anyway, there's, there's a times, uh, <laughs> uh, there's some people, uh, they're checking out, and uh, I was buying the groceries. And, uh, and people said, I was buying the groceries, and then some ladies, they put the groceries in their car. And I was kind of always real hyper, because I was a kid. I boxed for almost three years. I was going fast, fast, fast. You know? Anyway, uh, I was, the, the same day, I was buying groceries at Albertsons. And in the evening, I was like, working at Casa Miguel. And I worked from uh, 7 to 3, and then I went to Casa Miguel from 5 to uh, 9, 10 o'clock in the pens. But anyway, she said, you need to go to this restaurant. You need to go to Albertsons. And there's a guy that looks just like you. <laughs> I said, you know this guy? Yeah, he looks just like you. So, nah. I said, did he bag groceries for you this morning? Yeah. Did you give him a $2 tip? Yeah. That was you then. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I always believe in uh, working hard. Now. I mean, I think uh, my, my motto is Ronald Reagan. I said, if you work hard, you this mm -hmm. American dream. You know, we have to come in and, and be productive. And, and uh, I just been very thankful that... Uh, God have shown me so many ways to, to be productive. And I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to come back to Lancaster and, and show you what I got. Because uh, over the years, I mean, uh, coming to board, I never thought uh, flying F-16 out there. I mean, uh, this is uh, an 07. Uh, we host probably, over the years, we host uh, three Secretary Air Force at the restaurant in Boron. I was there for 25 years, you know, still. And, uh, but 05... We're hosting a big party, and we have all these guys who come with the guns, and all that's so OSI guys, and all they're there. And we have this group of about 16 people. 
And I were out there taking care of them like, I mean, uh, like normal people. We, try to, we always try to run a family restaurant. That's my, my motto is, is cater to the family crowd because uh, bar crowds is a different deal, but uh, we like to cater to the family crowd. The people can, we see kids run and all of a sudden we see them. And those are official customers. I tell them, are official customers. We have a train running around Boron. We have a train in the kids. Can. We have to invest in our future customers. That's what makes it unique. And, uh, anyway, uh, when we, ha we have the Secretary Air Force uh, at the restaurant, uh, this is uh, 06, and uh, he called me. We were, uh, there's pretty much fun eating, and they were kind of socializing. And, uh, and uh, in Boron, we have a, it's called, the, we call it Boron Water. It's a special tequila that we have for the astronauts and a special guest. <laughs> so I'm still kind of uh, deciding what we call it in, in Lancaster. We're just going to have to be renamed. But uh, anyway, uh, that was, uh, at that time, uh, we had uh, General Bakey, was, uh, he was a general uh, on base. And, uh, and uh, he happened, he went to, he went to, uh, went to a restroom, and uh, the Southern Secretary of called me and said, I was kind of nervous. I said, what is he? What is he? Uh, he said, Domingo, you really made me feel at home. He said, uh, I got trouble all over the world, and then uh, I never have so much hospitality like the, the way you treat us here. And he said, uh, he said, uh, have I ever taken you on know, an uh, F-16 flight or a P-38? He said, they haven't, but uh, I'd love to. I'd love to take one. If, if it comes from you, and then uh, it'd be an honor to take one. And uh, uh, when Becky came back, uh, uh, Secretary Wayne called him, hey, we need to take Domingo for a flight. And he said, uh, he's, he's a great uh, model to our community. And I mean, uh, Edwards and Domingo is one big family. That's how we, that's what we call it, one family, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, a year went by, and uh, I got a call from protocol from the base. And says, he said, Domingo, you've been appointed to fly the either two thirty or F-16. I said, oh. They said, I offer you the moon or the star, and you got to go for the moon. So I said, I want an F-16 flight. So <laughs> anyway, I have some pictures to prove you, to show you guys a little bit. And I mean, uh, I mean, very few people, I'm very, very honored and very, very blessed to to, to get the thrill at that. I mean, I mean the day of the fly, uh, I got there early, and uh, I was like, that was supposed to be one plane. I said, we're taking out with two planes. I said, wow. <laughs> I mean, more words, but not big enough to thank you for what they're what they offered to me, and uh, I mean that's similar to what I want, to bring, I want to bring to Lancaster. I want to bring. I talked to General Arnie Bunch uh, last week, and uh, he said we can wait to see you in Lancaster. He said we want to come and see you, and uh, we want to support you. And matter of fact, uh, we've been talking to Arnie Bunch. He said uh, two days before we open the restaurant, we're going to bring. We estimate about anywhere from 10 to 15 generals. They're going to come from different areas. So uh, we have a. Uh, uh, General Reynolds is in Ohio, General Pearson's in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Uh, so different people that we want to bring to the uh, city of Lancaster. But uh, first I want to say thank to all you guys and uh, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, I said, oh, my goodness, I never thought we'd be in the same room. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I want to say thank to all you guys. And uh, once again, uh, thank you. I'm looking forward to come back to Lancaster and, uh, and bring the best to what we have learned over the years. I've been doing this for a number of years, and uh, I think it's – I mean, my motto is, I said, hey, when the customer's happy, everybody's happy. So that's, if I don't bring the best to you guys, I'm not happy. So thank I want to say thank here. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. If I may, Vice Mayor. Domingo, I'm so glad that you said you're shy to talk. Thank goodness, you know, that we, we didn't have to try <laughs> and make you speak. But um, I have had the honor of knowing this young gentleman in high school, and he, not just him, but his whole family, since I've known, since childhood, have been hard workers. And that's what this program is about, is those that want their dreams to come true. And we have the opportunity to make a small difference and allow those dreams to come true. And we thank you for coming back home and to build your restaurant here in our great city of Lancaster and also on Avenue I, which is where I grew up. It's going to be a great location. The people around there are going to appreciate it, and uh, we will definitely be there in your restaurant. So thank you again for coming home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're the only AV person up here that's left. I want to tell you how much we appreciate your interest to come back home, and I'm sure you're going to be a good fit, so thank you. And with that, I'm going to make a motion, if there's no more discussion, to approve the loan for Domingo's uh, Mexican and Seafood Restaurant. And I think the other Lopes alumni will second that. 
We have a motion and a second. Ron, you want to say anything? Ron? <laughs> Let's vote. We'll vote. Motion passes, four to nothing. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to hear a staff report on NB2 from the Deputy City Attorney, Allison. Good evening. Uh, before you tonight is a uh, new, new business item two, an ordinance to replace the current or, uh, ordinance chapter 9.44 with a new chapter 9.44. Uh, as our current Chapter 9.44 is enacted, it is within the rights um, of the city to adopt and enforce. However, it is in an area of the law that is in influx and, which, and in which lawsuits abound throughout the state of California. In fact, the Orange County District Attorney is currently fighting for similar ordinances in, the, in uh, Orange County, and those cases are pending before the Court of Appeal in the Godinez matter. Um, other cases are also pending throughout the lower courts in California. Tonight's ordinance reflects um, an intent to let the law get defined by the courts in the pending cases without the city of Lancaster being the one to foot the bill. Uh, the city can always come back and amend the ordinance later after the law is more settled and the now pending suits throughout the state are resolved. Um, the provisions removed from the ordinance uh, by the proposed ordinance tonight are covered by other provisions of state law and uh, that provide uh, protection for the citizens of Lancaster. Um, the provision left in with regard to um, the Halloween uh, issues for um, uh, Halloween issues has been upheld by one federal court um, as uh, in compliance with a state and federal laws. So um, with that, I would recommend approval of the revised chapter 9.44. We have three speaker cards. Andrew Nieto. I speak solely on the subject of the Halloween decorations issue. Um, I first want to make it absolutely clear that I am an ardent constitutionalist. I have spoken to this pulpit before, speaking of how ardent an environmentalist I am. I am even more ardent of a constitutionalist. Um, as I read the ordinance as it pertains to the Halloween decorations, prominently coming to my mind are the constitutional provisions of due process and equal protection. Um, I want to make clear that I believe it is an absolutely reasonable consideration to prevent those convicted of crimes against children to prevent them from allowing their homes to be a destination for children. Um, certainly decorating your home on Halloween, you're inevitably going to get trick-or-treaters at your house. It's just an unavoidable reality. Uh, so I completely agree with the idea of preventing um, those convicted of crimes against children from being able to decorate their houses on Halloween. My concern with the ordinance is on constitutional grounds. Um, that is being currently discussed in the federal courts. And I have my, both my agreements and my disagreements with the way the courts have rolled on the subject. My opinion is that this is a matter that needs to be settled at the state level because of the equal protection concept. All felonies are a matter of state law, and for an individual city to be able to assign of itself an added penalty to a crime, if you will, I don't consider that to be equal protection, because that crime is not the subject of the city's jurisdiction. So I have my definite reservations. Um, I will be honest, I have my reservations of the entire ordinance on that same grounds. It's an ordinance that, I, that at the state level I completely support. Uh, I believe it is absolutely fair. There are some statistical revisions I would make to it on account of um, crime statistics, but my honest concern with having this ordinance at the city level is that it runs afoul of the constitutional provision of equal protection of the law because felonies of this sort are not matters of city law, but are matters in the courts of state law. And so for the city to be able to come in and define its own punishments to be applied after conviction and after sentencing 
I have very strong concerns of the equal protection concept on that. Thank you. Vice uh, Mayor, can I make a comment for that one? Thank you, Andrew. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> I happen to have been one of the spokespeople for Jessica's Law, so um, the state already took care of that by passing that legislation. There's a, uh, a, there's a, a part of the legislation that takes care of what you're talking about. It's called preemption, so we can actually do that. It's actually in there giving us the authority to be able to set other standards. Anthony Disney. Uh, I'll wait. I don't want to speak. Tonight. Robert Long. Hi, Vice Mayor, Council. How are you guys doing? Good. Hi. Cool. And I, I, I was reading this, this about this ordinance, and I just wanted to voice my own support. I am completely in in favor. Of, the, of this ordinance being approved because unfortunately I come from a family where my mom was sexually abused as a child and I watched I watched her try to try to heal and to uncover all those memories and to what and I saw just what she had to go through to be able to cope with those things as an adult the effects of, ch of childhood sexual abuse they they stay with a person for the rest of their life th th this is permanent damage that is done to the psyche of the individual that has to endure this I am for any ordinance that will keep our children safe. C concerning, concerning Halloween, I like to take my younger brother, to, who's, who's, still, who's still under the age of 18, to Candy Cane Lane, Clark Court. And I would feel a lot safer knowing that, that, that a sex offender was not in that area or advertising his house using or drawing any kind of attention to his house using any kind of decorations. I would prefer that only straight, upright citizens would be given would be given out candies to, to kids. So anything that involves any kind of control over sex offenders and prevents them from hurting children, I am in I am in full favor of. And I, I have to disagree with my with my friend. I, I don't uh, I don't see where this is unconstitutional in, in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Questions. Discussion. I just want to let the citizens of Lancaster know that at least it's my intention to give law enforcement every tool that's possible to make sure that our kids are safe. So with that, do we have a motion and a second? Yeah, I motion we uh, introduce ordinance number 988. Second. Let's vote. Motion passes 4 0. Okay. Discussion of possible action regarding the proposed funding for improvements at the Lancaster Metrolink station. Mayor Paris and I have been researching this issue for some time, and we believe the best way to serve our community transportation needs is to work hand in hand with the city of Palmdale. Presently, both the city of Lancaster and the city of Palmdale maintain separate Metrolink stations. Rather than maintaining the status quo in which Metro is forced to divvy up funds between Lancaster and Palmdale, we feel it's in the region's best interest to devote that funding entirely to a single transportation center. The Palmdale Transportation Center is the ideal location for an all-purpose transportation hub. A number of new projects, including the proposed California high-speed rail and high desert corridor, are rapidly changing our regional transportation landscape. Both cities have been working with the California High-Speed Rail Authority to determine the best route for the proposed train in order to minimize the negative impact and maximize the usability for our residents. Additionally, the rising cost of gas creates an ever greater demand for mass transit service. Mayor Paris and I firmly believe that the resources and staff time of both cities, as well as those of the Metropolitan Transit Authority, would best be used to establish one rate transportation, one first rate transportation center, rather than continuing to maintain two separate centers that are not as strong as they could be. Our residents deserve the best, and we believe the partnership is the path to providing it. We plan to work with the City of Palmdale, 
member Steve Hotbauer, Tom Lackey, and any appropriate staff to better analyze the region's need to explore the concept of consolidating the city's two stations into a single transportation center located in Palmdale. Lancaster City Council has a vision for this community as we do with our brethren in the city of Palmdale. We believe our citizens can best be served by pooling the resources of our two great cities and establishing one incredible multi-use transportation hub. On behalf of the City of Lancaster, we look forward to working with the City of Palmdale to make this vision a reality. Any discussion? What's, what's the proposal? Are you proposing for staff to come back with a report or an action item? Is, is that what we're doing right now? During some of the NCTC meetings, um, Metrolink is proposing to enhance our Metrolink station. And with all the activity and Palmdale's transportation center, we'd like that money to be used in Palmdale for a regional center to best suit all of our citizens. I agree. I think that's the best thing that we could do. I mean, to bring both cities together to work on something that's truly important to our community, both Lancaster and Palmdale, and to really focus on one station and, as you said, to make it first class. We have to do that. We have to come together and put the funds in one location to make that happen. So I, I support that and I agree with that very much. I think that will be the best for our community. Do we need a motion or to make this happen? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's on there for potential action, so you could direct us to work with council. I, the, from what I heard, you're going to contact or you want us to contact the Palmdale representatives. Is that correct? Yes, and can you set up a meeting with us so we can work together to make this happen? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do we have a consensus on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Great. Wonderful. Uh, sanitation district report. Uh, nothing special. We had our normal monthly meeting on February 21st. We approved the normal action items, which were expenditures for the month. And that pretty much concludes my... my uh, summation of the report on the activities. Thank you. Uh, no action on the financing authority, no action on the power authority, no action on the successor agency. Uh, city manager, you have any announcements? Uh, just one. About a week ago we had the pleasure of attending with uh, Councilwoman Johnson and Mayor Paris a um, KB 1000 solar home they were celebrating. And uh, there are 200 of those thousand homes are in the city of Lancaster. That's people taking advantage of the sun and saving, um, saving on their electric bills. But the city of Lancaster should take pride in Mayor Paris in the fact that the first one built by KB was in Lancaster in a partnership with BYD. And from that grew a thousand homes. And um, it's really quite remarkable. KB is a wonderful company. I don't, uh, Councilwoman Johnson, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Well, I, thank you. And I, it was an amazing um, event to be able to celebrate 1,000 homes um, being built with solar. And as our city manager mentioned, we are the first, the city of Lancaster. That's a great way of us being an example of us making history. And that's what our goal is, is making history on um, something that's based on our future. So we're very proud here at the city of Lancaster to be able to say that uh, we're the first home, and we have 200 of those homes here in our city. So it was, it was a very proud day. Mr. Bozian, do you know any, uh, what the cost is of adding solar to those homes? Uh, no, I don't exactly, and I'd be reluctant to say I could find it out, but I don't. I, I do know that uh, the, I don't know if the uh, deputy city manager does, I know that the way KB advertises is they give you the exact uh, um, rate of return you're going to get when it's paid off, and they have these really pretty cool um, signs on the wall that shows what your electric bills will be with all the improvements they put in plus the electricity. So the savings accrues to the home buyer immediately. I think it's a great deal. That's actually what sold this 200th or 100th, 1,000 home to these homeowners, uh, which, by the way, had the cutest little dog. But that's what sold it to them was the savings that they were going to be receiving uh, with their home. So definitely works. Good. City Clerk. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time for you to address the City Council on any items that are not on the agenda. You'll find speaker cards at the back of the Council Chambers. We ask that you fill them out completely and as clearly as possible so that if the City Manager, City Staff, and the Council need to get in touch with you, they will have your information. As much as we appreciate your request to make comments before your three minutes begin, please understand your time begins when your name is announced. Individual speakers are limited to three minutes each. If you choose to ask a question during this time, any response by council will not extend your three minutes. When you approach the podium, you'll see three lights. The green light comes on when your time begins. The yellow light comes on when you have 30 seconds remaining. And the red light comes on when your time is up. We ask that you to be considerate of the allotted time to allow other speakers to have their three minutes as well. Following this procedure will allow for a smooth and timely process for the meeting. State law prohibits the City Council from taking action on items not on the agenda, and your matter will be referred to the City Manager. Thank you. Dr. Mohammed. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and the Council Members. My name is Dr. Risha Mohammed, and this is Dr. Michael Miguel Coronado. We're from the Tapestry Commission. We're commissioners on that commission. And we'd like to take this opportunity to invite everyone to attend the commission's Weaver's public meeting holding on tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock p.m. The cha it will be held here in the council's chambers, and the topics will be Women's History and Celebration of Women's History Month with the presentation from AAUW and Girl Scouts of America. Health in Celebration of Health Awareness Month with a presentation from Two Lifestyles and a presentation of the Environment in Celebration of Earth Day. We'd just like to take the opportunity to invite everyone to attend on tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Especially you. the new captain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. David Paul. Welcome, David. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor and Council, good evening. I like to say that there is no greater joy to, than to love and respect the law, and I could hear that tonight in Mr. Domingo Gutierrez's voice as he spoke about his joy of service. And I appreciate coming here to be part of this body that helps make the law better. That's why I'm here tonight. Um, you never expect things, but... Um, I, I greatly appreciate the Antelope Valley Press and their willingness to publish my letters, but sometimes they don't publish the whole thing, and that's really why I came tonight. I have a problem with neighbors and their fireplace smoke that can be oppressive at times, and it really doesn't matter. I was at the uh, State of the City address, and uh, Mayor Paris spoke about asthma, and he asked how many people have ever seen an asthma attack. I have. My wife has asthma. so. An event only has to happen once to bring catastrophe to me, and it seems really silly that we don't allow certain things at one point, but you can bring things into your fireplace and burn them. Now, here's what I wanted to read the rest of the letter. I talk about, from this problem, I have learned several things. Um, the City of Lancaster, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and the Air Quality Control District are all genuinely sympathetic to my problem and would like to help, but are powerless to do so, their hands tied by current law. I would like to see the laws changed. The only recourse they have is to send my neighbor a strong letter telling him what he can burn in his fireplace, what kind of smoke he can smoke me out with. That's not acceptable to me, but um, I wanted to clear the record. And uh, to Brett Banks of the uh, Air Quality District, I would like to apologize when I get a little heated. I, I lean on people heavy. Um, Captain Ken Garcia of the uh, Los Angeles County Fire Department, he was magnificent and uh, did everything he could to help me. And finally, Vice Mayor Christ, you, you were phenomenal. You were there every step of the way for me, and uh, that meant the most to me that you gave your time and effort to help me fix this problem. We need to change the law. We need to think about what people put in their uh, chimneys and uh, it doesn't seem like a big deal but you know when this smoke comes in I can't even let my dogs in and out of the house because smoke floods into my house and 
it's not a one-time event. It, it repeatedly happens uh, dozens of times over the course of the winter, and, and I'm a literal hostage, and I'd like something done about it. So thank you for hearing me tonight, and uh, Vice Mayor Chris, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Jason Zink. Hey guys, Council. Uh, just some ideas. Uh, I still believe the meeting should start at 6 o'clock in order for people to get home and check on their kids and their dogs and get a bite to eat before you start because it's just, I just got here 10 minutes ago myself. And most cities I've checked uh, don't even start their meetings until 7 or 6.30. Uh, cell phones, tower signals, that's the most important thing right now that's affecting my life is that there's no signals in this, uh, this town. They've dropped calls and stuff like that, so I'd like you guys to keep on addressing that. And Wi-Fi. I was at the uh, Palmdale Culture Center. They don't even have Wi-Fi over there. So how do we get these big GE corporations and stuff to come here and we're not even Wi-Fi friendly in our cities? Uh, parking tickets. Why are we outsourcing the jobs to other places that, uh, that open up the envelopes and stuff to process uh, tickets? To test it's not even in our own county. So we should be able to find somebody that can open up envelopes in Lancaster and hire them. Uh, the new uh, High Desert Hospital on I and 3rd, the main contractor is not paying any of their contractors and is putting a real big burden on all the uh, local contractors' families and stuff like that. So I'd like you to address that and help those local contractors with the, uh, the main contractor. The big contractors, they don't care because they got a lot of money. But, you know, the small contractors doesn't have the bankroll in order to put up with all the politics that goes on over there. Jason, can you be more specific? Uh, basically, they, uh, there was two uh, uh, architects on the, on the project, and the first one, you know, took off. So basically, they did some more plans, more work, which required the local contractors to do more work. And then now they're arguing about being paid. They're like, well, you should have looked through the, you know, all this little stuff and technicality stuff that they're trying to really hurt these local contractors on. So, Mr. Bozigian, can you look into that? Uh, yeah, that's the county project, and we'll be talking to the county tomorrow morning on that. Okay, thank you. And I'd like to see an AV High Speed Rail Citizens Committee for Antelope Valley. Uh, it's it's just weird. Other cities in Northern California. Uh, have already started uh, like years ago about the sound. We don't even know what a high-speed rail sounds like. We don't even know what they look like. And yet there's no discussion. We need more openly discussion on what's going to happen. Is it going to go up in the air or is it going to go down in the ground? You know, and we don't even know. If this was China, we, you know, you'd make it a thousand feet wide and go through the whole area and, you know, turn a hundred thousand people into ten million. We need to have <coughs> bigger vision when it comes to this project. And the other thing is we need to put a face on this project. We have this high-speed rail, but there's no face on it. And I was thinking maybe we could use our local connections with, um, you know, uh, Alan Musk or uh, Sir uh, Bronson or Paul Allen or uh, Rutan, just a few more seconds, please, and Rutan and use him as a, as a catalyst to say, look at this great project. Because if we can get, make some of the things that go onto that project and he's the engineer on it, those jobs will stay here, and they'll have to buy the stuff from us, and uh, which would we corner the market because there are going to be more high-speed rails throughout the country. And if they make all the little sprockets and everything in Antelope Valley, he could create 10,000 jobs like aerospace. So there's an article in there I, I wanted you guys to read, and plus uh, I want you guys to look up uh, Roger Little from uh, uh, Spear Corporation, which I think he's the catalyst for bringing solar uh, manufacturing to the Antelope Valley. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jason. <clears throat> City Council, any comments? Sandra? No. Okay, okay we're going to go into closed session. Conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9D, one potential case, and conference with legal counsel existing litigation, government code 54956.9. A, for all of the items listed on the agenda. Okay. We'll be back.
We'll now reconvene the meeting. City Attorney, your announcement, please. Yes, in closed session, the City Council gave direction to Council with regard to Waterhouse versus Lancaster, Miracle Star versus Lancaster, Save Our Neighborhood Group versus Lancaster, How Lancaster versus Housing Authority of the County of Los Angeles, Coalition for Open Government versus Lancaster, Quartz Hill versus what well, Quartz Hill Cares versus Lancaster, uh, Bowles versus Lancaster, and Doe versus Lancaster. Also, in Do the matter of Doe versus Lancaster, the City Council approved on a 4 0 vote a conditional settlement agreement, uh, the terms of which provide for adoption of a new ordinance payment of $15,000 in attorney's fees, and after adoption of the new ordinance, uh, the plaintiffs will dismiss the action two days later. Can you go over real quick the, who's paying the bill for the uh, Coalition for Open Government? On uh, Coalition for Open Government and Quartz Hills Cares, uh, the Walmart entities are paying the uh, attorney's fees incurred. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Okay, we stand adjourned till March 26, 2013, the City Council and the Housing Authority. Again, so let me give you guys, real quick, in recognition of your outstanding efforts while assigned to the Lancaster Station Community Appreciation Program, during the summer months of 2012, you and your team selfishly adjusted your work schedule to assist in the combating the crime rate in the city of Lancaster. Your team arrested 390 criminals utilizing search warrants, probation and parole searches, and saturation patrol. Your work ethic, leadership, teamwork, collaborative approach to fighting crime are truly commendable. Your efforts truly exemplify a tradition of service, our core values, and department creed. And I just want to highlight one thing. That was only over the summer months. That's a lot of people that went to jail in a short period of time. And again, it's all due to 